feel like this phone is better suited to be a Nintendo DS than an actual phone. I remember getting my first Nintendo DS. It was Christmas 2004. I got the system along with a few games like Super Mario Bros. 64 DS, Ping Pals, and WarioWare Touched. I also remember upgrading to the DS Lite, which must have been like the week it released because I distinctly remember having to get an employee at Best Buy to go to the back to get one. But after the DS Lite, I didn't really pick up a new one until I got a 3DS XL to play Omega Ruby and Smash. But the DS models always felt a little cheap, especially with the display quality, and sure we don't really question those things at the time, but when you go from a DS to a PSP which were out around the same time, the display quality feels pretty drastic between the two. But here we are almost 20 years since the release of the original Nintendo DS, and only a few years since the DS and 3DS line were discontinued altogether, and little did we know that the same year they were discontinued, the ultimate Nintendo DS would actually be released, disguised as the Microsoft Surface Duo. So let me tell you about this phone. Kinda cool looking, right? Well, this was actually one of the first folding phones on the market, and of course, Microsoft's first folding phone as well. It was released in 2020, and rather than do the whole folding display thing that a lot of other companies are doing, this device went the two-screen route, which I think sparked a lot of intrigue in the tech community. And for the retro gaming community, I mean, come on, this thing screams make me into a Nintendo DS. But it was mainly marketed as being great for productivity. You know, looking at emails on one screen while watching watching the weather on the other, or have an article open with notes open on the other side, and with the Surface Pen, it really does make a great notepad. And these screens are absolutely gorgeous to be honest with you, being two 5.6 inch AMOLED displays, and obviously it does all the other phone stuff too, like watch videos on either screen or across both screens, which you can also do with any app, which we'll get back to in a sec, but text, calls, web, type, it can do all those things pretty well, though the ratio of the phone itself is kind of weird, but as I'm sure you figured out, we will not be using this thing as an actual phone, because Microsoft's other big selling point for this was that it could act like a portable Xbox. Now, not because it has the power of an Xbox, but you could play games from your Xbox on this thing via the cloud, kind of like how PlayStation is planning on doing gaming with the PlayStation Portal, but because it has has two screens, it makes gaming super awesome. Now games in the actual app store that support this might be scarce, but if you open up a game from the app store and we turn the whole device like a DS, then we make it so that the game spans across both displays and your gameplay will appear on top with the controls appearing at the bottom, which is great because we can now fully see what we are doing without our fingers getting in the way whatsoever, but then pair it with a game pad and we just entered a whole new level of gaming with this thing. So right off the bat, what you all came for, let's try out some DS gaming. So like I mentioned earlier, you can make any app full size across both displays. And when you do that with our DS emulator, it perfectly divides your two DS screens between both displays. Let's pull up those classics I played back in the day and see how they fare when compared to being played on an original DS, a DS Lite, a 3DS XL, and now the Ultimate DS. Playing Super Mario 64 on this thing is an absolute treat. The screens just feel huge and so bright. Ping Pals isn't really a game per se, so it kind of only barely works because of all the connectivity it needs to link to other DS systems. And WarioWare Touch is an absolutely awesome experience, especially when you pair the Surface Pen, which a lot of other emulation devices don't have this kind of support.
And really, any DS game you throw at this thing will look great and play great. And that's the end of the video, thanks! What? You wanted more? Well, you're in luck, because this thing plays way more than just DS games. And your next question is probably, does this play 3DS games? And the answer is, yeah, it does. And they look awesome. Of course, there's no 3D functionality, but whoever played with that to begin with? And I 2 x the resolution, so it is super crisp. Now let's play some more games. Now, I've mainly talked about DS games just because of the form factor, and let's face it, there aren't many great emulation devices out there that give you an honest DS experience. And because this is just a foldable Android tablet, we can install some other emulators and pretty much play whatever we want to. And because those games only require one screen, you can actually use the other screen for other multitasking, like watching a YouTube video while you play, kind of making this thing like the ultimate couch potato gaming device. But here's some of my favorite consoles that I've emulated on here.
So as you can see, this thing makes for a pretty great little gaming device. But this awesome phone turned gaming device actually ended up being a huge failure for Microsoft. Well, they actually did come out with a second version of this phone, though tech enthusiasts seem to flock back to the original as the one to get. And here's some of my thoughts on it. First off, I will say that if you are going to get this device, do not use it as your daily phone. Only use it as a gaming device or like a simple tablet. It's just when it's folded up, it's kind of this weird ratio. Like look at it compared to a regular phone. And it can also be kind of annoying when you want to watch a video across the both screens and there's just a line down the middle. And what should hold you back even further from getting this is the glitchy OS. It tends to stutter a lot and is also kind of confusing at times. Like it's perfectly usable, obviously it runs Android, but like moving apps between screens is not as seamless as it should be. And there are just also a lot of two screen features on this phone in particular that are just buggy overall. Though perhaps the worst thing on here is the camera. Like I kind of feel like I'm stuck in 2008 with this level of quality. And the second one tried to fix all that, but essentially failed. Especially since the phone couldn't even fold over on itself flat anymore. I don't know, if it ran a bit smoother, it might be easier to recommend, but it also came out at a time when foldable phones were just starting out. So it'll be interesting to see if we see a resurgence of this concept in the future. I do find it funny though, that this device has kind of found a renaissance with the retro community. Like I'm sure a lot of people thought that this would be another failed foldable and that would be it, but it seriously makes for a great retro gaming device. Like it can even play games that my laptop can't even handle currently. And that design making me real nostalgic over here. Making this, in my opinion, the ultimate Nintendo DS. Thanks for watching. Makes for a great retro gaming device. <laughs>